Straight Nuts Flakes program, the first radio program to come to you from Williams Field near Chandler, Arizona, and starring Jack Benny, with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Dennis Day, Rochester, and yours truly, Don Wilson. <laughs> Friends, the other night I saw a movie about a young man as rich and distinctive as, well, as the rich, distinctive flavor of Grape Nuts Flakes. And he met a young girl as truly appealing as, well, as an appealing bowl full of Grape Nuts Flakes. And when they got married, they lived as happily as, well, as happily as folks who have that grand tasting Grape Nuts Flakes at breakfast every morning. <laughs> well, friends, the moral of the story is just this. You'll find malty, rich, sweet as a nut grape nuts flakes. The del grape nuts flakes bring you your form of delicate, toasty brown flakes. A flavor that's utterly distinctive because it's a two grain blend of sun ripened wheat and malted barley, toasted golden brown and crisp. Grape nut flakes, America's fastest growing cereal. So, for a smooth tasting, delicious breakfast treat, ask for grape nuts flakes in the thrifty 12 ounce package. Mr. Jones, played by the orchestra. And now, ladies and gentlemen, from Williams Field near Chandler, Arizona, we bring you a man who, after a week under the blazing Arizona sun, no longer looks like a frog's belly in the moonlight, Jack Benny! Thank you, thank you. Hmm, frog's belly in the moonlight. Uh, Jello again. I mean, grape nut flakes again. Uh, this is Jack Benny speaking. And Don, although you put it rather crudely, there's no question about it. I do look much better with my desert tan. Yes, Jack, you certainly do. Well, why not? I'm outdoors all the time, horseback riding, swimming. I tell you, Don, I feel like a million dollars. I mean, 25,000. You can't feel like a million anymore. <laughs> You know, Don, this Arizona sunshine seems to have done you a lot of good, too. Oh, it has, Jack. Every afternoon, I've been taking a sun bath up on the roof of my hotel. You? You take sun baths on the roof? That's a little dangerous, isn't it? What do you mean, dangerous? Well, there are a lot of planes flying around here, and from 10,000 feet, you must look like a landing field. <laughs> Really, I'm, I'm not kidding. Oh, now, be reasonable, Jack. From 10,000 feet in the air, I look like an ant. Well, it must be that fat ant of yours that lives in Denver. <laughs> I know a landing field when I see one. Oh, hello, Mary. Hello, Jack. Well, get a load of you. What a tan you've got. Haven't I, though? Tell you, Mary, I look just like those toasty brown grape nut flakes. Yeah, but you still shake like jello. <laughs> I do not. I'm the picture of health. Gosh, I've been outdoors all week. Well, why don't you get a room? <laughs> I've got a room. I'm living at the Arizona Biltmore, and what a ritzy place that is. The Arizona Biltmore isn't even opened yet. All right, so I have to make my own bed. <laughs> a little bending over isn't going to hurt. <laughs> but that hotel is lovely. Your kids will have to, you know, you kids will have to come out and visit me. Oh, I'd love to, Jack. Which room are you in? Oh, you can't miss it. It's the one with the boards knocked off the window. <laughs> but do come over. Imagine moving into a hotel that isn't even open. That's the cheapest thing all I ever... All right, all right, forget it. Where are you living? I'm at the Westward Ho, and it's one of the most beautiful hotels in Phoenix. It is, eh? But you wouldn't like it. It's got maids and bellboys and telephones and everything. <laughs> You're right. I'd rather rough it at the Biltmore. That's me, huh? <laughs> Tell me, Mary, have you been having a lot of fun this week in Phoenix? Soldiers and cowboys? How can I miss? <laughs> You're always thinking of men. What's the matter with you? Perfectly normal. Look it up. <laughs> I don't mean that. Hey, Jackson, ain't it wonderful here in Arizona? They ain't nothing like them wide open spaces. Oh, hello, hello, Phil. Yes, yes, it is, and the climate is so grand. Yeah, this air's a nut. That's because there's very little humidity. 
Who, who what? Humidity, stupid. That means no moisture. I know what it means. I also know how to pronounce it, but I'll be darned if I'll tell you. Say, uh, where are you living, Melonhead? <laughs> See, I'm glad I put that in, you know? Oh, get in, Phil. Where, uh... Well, look, Jackson, what? I'm staying at a beautiful place. It's called the uh, Camelback Inn. Oh, at the Camelback, eh? Having a good time? Well, I've gone without water for seven days. If that's <laughs> well, that's typical of you, Phil. You come to a beautiful place like this and you don't get any rest at all. What are you talking about? I'm under the bed every night by 10 o'clock. <laughs> well, Phil, I'd like to ask you why you don't sleep on top of the bed, but I know your orchestra is there. <laughs> By the way, uh, you and your boys came all the way from Hollywood on the Santa Fe bus, did you? All but my guitar player. He bought a new pair of shoes and he wanted to break them in. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Now I've heard everything. Hey, Mr. Benny, I was wondering if I could dedicate my song tonight oh, to my... Oh, hello, Dennis. Hello. Say, Mr. Benny, I was wondering if I could dedicate... What? What do you say? I was wondering if I could dedicate my... Uh, how, uh, how do you feel out here in the desert, kid? Oh, fine. Good. I had a slight case of cactus in my seat, but it's all out now. <laughs> well, there's a lot of it going around. You know? <laughs> I know about that. Jack backed into a cactus the other night. Never mind. <laughs> and he had to take off his pants with a pair of tweezers. <laughs> all right, all right. Say, Mr. Benny, I was wondering if I could dedicate my song tonight to a girlfriend of mine. I'm singing Conchita. Oh, oh, is that your girlfriend's name? No, Conchita? Ba no, Babe Mark. <laughs> well, what's the, what's the connection between Conchita and Babe Mark? Well, she Conchita more than any girl I ever had <laughs> Dennis, you better get a big hat The sun here is taking advantage of you Thank you She was a handsome young Irish lad, she was a Mexican beauty. It was BS and I might add, romantically he was in beauty. A boy and a girl beneath a star. I can tell it in 64 bars. His Irish heart went bingo when he saw the rose of Juarez. Oh. Conchita, Marquita, Lolita, Pepita, Rosita, Juanita, Lopez Oh, you're a lovely thing, oh For me there's but one girl, he says oh. Conchita, Marquita, Lolita, Pepita, Rosita, Juanita, Lopez Mandolin began to play And her lips were there to kiss As they danced, I heard him say New Jersey was never like this. And the bell began to ring off as they rolled away on a mule. To prove I'm not choking, if you're in Hoboken, drop in for a minute and you'll meet Conchita, Marquita, Lolita, Pepita, Rosita, Juanita, Maria, Elisa, and Patsy, and Molly, and Mike, and Jose, and Pancho, and Pedro, and Sancho, and Tommy, and Timmy, and Spike. Of course, there are others. They're sisters and brothers. They're older, and they go to school. There's no more to my song now. Oh, I'll run along. Conchita Rosita Lopez, sung by Dennis Day. 
And now, ladies and gentlemen, I have a very important announcement to make. Last Monday afternoon, Jack Benny went to an official automobile graveyard in Los Angeles and contributed his famous Maxwell to the junk salvage drive. Yep, little Maxie is going to do her bit in the war effort. So at this time, folks, we would like to reenact for you all that took place on that historic occasion. Gosh, did, did I make history? Why, certainly. They want to take Paul Revere out of the school books and put you in. <laughs> no, stop. I know better than that. John Paul Revere, what a sailor he was. <laughs> oh, quiet. Continue, Don. Jack felt that his whole radio gang should be present to take a farewell ride in that old jalopy. So he told us to be at his house at 3 o'clock sharp, and we'd all ride to the junkyard. Now, imagine. Imagine turning a car like this into the junk pile. Why, the motor is in wonderful condition. Wonderful condition? Yes. I lifted up the hood yesterday, and the spark plug was playing ring around the fan bill. <laughs> That's a lie because I'm wearing the fan belt. <laughs> you know, fellas, I, I realize I should give my car to the salvage drive, but, gee, you, you can't blame a fella for being blue and, and all choked up. Did the laundry shrink your collar? No. <laughs> Pay attention. I'm sentimental. Take it easy, Rochester. No use getting another ticket for speeding. Holy smoke, Jackson. You mean to say you got a ticket for speeding in this car? That's right, Mr. Harris. Our bumper got hooked to a fire truck. <laughs> I don't care how it happened. We were going like the wind. Now watch what you're doing, Rochester, and grab a hold of the steering wheel. I'll catch it the next time it comes by. <laughs> well, you better. Imagine after all these years, parting with my little Maxwell. Oh, boy, hey, look at that gorgeous blonde standing on the corner there. Where, where, who, what, what, where? Oh, yeah, I see her. Oh, Jack, put down that telescope. <laughs> well, I know the girl. It's Shirley Truebucket. <laughs> <laughs> hello, hello, Shirley. Remember me? Jeepers, yes. Hmm. Turn here, Rochester. That junkyard is down on Western Avenue. Yeah. See, it ought to be around here somewhere. There's the sign, Jack. Official automobile graveyard. Oh, yeah. Turn in here, Rochester. Okay. And watch that curve. Easy does it. <laughs> well, well, that's it, fellas. That was our last trip. Our last ride in the Maxwell. I'll buy a drink. Never mind. <laughs> Uh, uh, hello. Uh, yes, sir. What can I do for you? Uh, I'm Jack Benny. Are you the head man in this junkyard? I'm not wearing this carnation in my overalls for nothing. <laughs> oh, oh, yes. Well, I've got a car here I'd like to turn into the salvage drive. This is it right here. Well, we do need junk, but uh, aren't you overdoing it, old man? <laughs> <laughs> Look, buddy, scrap is scrap. Now, how much am I offered? Uh, the rate we're paying here is $7 a ton, so I can give you about seven fifty. Seven fifty. dollars Now, wait a minute, mister. I've got a lot of extras on this car. For instance, the radio and the fog light, this cigarette lighter. What cigarette lighter? Right there. That's a candle. <laughs> well, if you can't light a cigarette with a candle, brother, you ought to give up smoking. <laughs> now, how much am I offered? It's still seven fifty. Oh. Now, you can have cash, but if you like, I'll pay you in war stamps. Well, I'll take the war stamps. Yes, sir. Uh, would you like a wet sponge, or have you strength enough to lick them? <laughs> yes, give me the stamp. I'll handle it. Thanks. Well, that's that. 
Come on, Jack. Let's get going. Yep. Got to get going, I guess. Yes, sir. Come on, Jackson. Let's get out of here. Yep. <laughs> Got to leave my little Maxie. Oh, well, it's, it's for a good cause. Yep. Well, what are we waiting for? Let's go. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go. Well, come on. Come on, Rochester. <laughs> I'm coming, Walt. I'm coming. <laughs> oh, stop bawling. Or you'll have me doing it, too. <laughs> come on. Let's get out of here. Gentlemen, it is several hours later, and Jack has returned to his home in Beverly Hills, and as we pick him up now, it's about bedtime. Five years. Five years I've had that little Maxwell. Now it's gone forever. Well, I might as well turn in, I guess. Uh, get my pajamas out, Rochester. I put a nightshirt right there on the bed, boys. I don't want a nightshirt. Been getting cold lately, and a nightshirt creeps up on me. This one won't do any creeping. I put stirrups on it. <laughs> good, good. Uh, I don't think I'll bother creaming my face tonight. <laughs> no, really, I'm, I'm too tired. My, my complexion is all right. But I got some new stuff from the drugstore. Betty Bunker's Beauty Bomb. <laughs> what, what's that? It says here, put it on and take a snooze, clears up wrinkles on face and shoes. <laughs> well, just, just put it on my shoes tonight. I'm all in. Here, hang up my pants and undershirt. Well, good evening, Mr. Billingsley. Good evening, Mr. Benny. Strip for your physical, I see. <laughs> no, no, I'm just getting ready for bed. I've been very restless lately, you know. Well, in that case, you must try one of my new sleeping pills. Here you are. But, Mr. Billingsley, this isn't a pill. It's a baseball bat. Well, if that doesn't do the trick, you ought to see a doctor. <laughs> hmm, well, thanks, anyway. Don't mention it. Good night, Mr. Benny. Good night. Oh, I haven't seen her in years. <laughs> He's a strange fellow. Boy, am I all in. Pleasant dreams, boss. Brace yourself. Rochester, put down that baseball bat. <laughs> You're as bad as he is. Gosh, this bed sure feels good. Although, how I can sleep with my Maxwell all busted up in that junkyard, I don't know. Boss, why don't you look at it this way? Before you know it, the scrap from your car is going to be part of a battleship or a tank or an airplane. Gee. Gee. I tell you, boss, if everybody in the country turned in their old junky cars and dug up all the scrap they could, there wouldn't be no shortage of nothing, especially victory. You're right, Rochester. Absolutely right. Well, good night. Good night, Mr. Benny. If your hot water bottle springs a leak, just put a Band-Aid on it. <laughs> I will. See, no wonder I'm tired. Gee, I practically helped Henry Kaiser build a ship today. Gosh, just think. Little Maxie's gonna be a ship. Or a tank. Or... Or maybe an airplane. Seven dollars a ton.
Calling Bombardier Benny. Calling Bombardier Benny. Report to commanding officer immediately. Bombardier Benny? Gee, that's me. I'm a bombardier. Calling Bombardier Benny. Coming. Coming, sir. Bombardier Benny reporting. Did you call me, sir? Yes. What kept you? Sorry, I was creaming my face. <laughs> What's up, sir? There's a bomber waiting outside, and you're assigned to the crew. Your destination is Tokyo. Tokyo? Yes. Are you ready? I sure am, Colonel Bridget. <laughs> I'm all set to shove off. Good. You'll find your bomber on the north runway. The pilot's warming up the plane now. Wait a minute. I forgot my radio. My fog light. And my cigarette lighter. Here's a candle. A candle? Yes. If you can't light a cigarette with a candle, you ought to take off that fan belt. <laughs> <laughs> Gee, the colonel's in a happy mood today. Oh, boy. Tokyo. I'm gonna blow that joint to smithereens, or my name ain't Bombardier Benny. <laughs> Look at all those bombers. I wonder which one is mine. Your plane is coming right up. Where? <laughs> well, I'll be. It's my Maxwell. Only it's got wings on it. Maxie. Maxie, speak to me. It knows me. <laughs> It's nice up here. How high are we, Rochester? 10,000 feet, boss. Good. At $7 a ton, that's a fortune. <laughs> well, we're off to Tokyo. We sure are. Uh oh, there's a right, red light up ahead. Slow down, Rochester. Red light? That's the sun. <laughs> well, it just turned green. Step on it. <laughs> Look at that water down there. Is that the Pacific Ocean Navigator? It sure is, Jackson. Phil Harris. Are you the navigator, Phil? I ain't wearing this carnation in my nose for nothing. <laughs> oh, yes. Where are we, Phil? Well, according to the calculations I just computed on my Mercator chart, we're at the zenith of the apex, longitude 42, latitude 51, and a wind velocity of $7 a ton. <laughs> what does that mean? Where are we? St. Joe, Missouri. <laughs> they love me there. <laughs> Come on, we gotta get to Tokyo. Gee, I, I hope we brought enough bombs with us. Cigars, cigarettes, bombs. You can't have any fun over Tokyo without a bomb. I'll take a few of those, miss. You want a wet sponge with them, or can you drop them yourself? Yourself? Oh, I haven't seen her in years. <laughs> What's the matter, Rochester? We're running into bad weather, boss. Look at that cloud up ahead. Where? Why, I know that cloud. It's Don Wilson. <laughs> Hiya, Don. <laughs> Hello, Jack. Where are you going? Tokyo. Good. I rained all over it last night. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to come along with us, Clown? I'd love to, but I gotta float back to America now and tell everybody about America's fastest growing cereal. Those toasty brown, sweet as a nut, grape nut flame. <laughs> Navigator, which way is Tokyo? I'll have to check my position by radio. Tune it in. <laughs> and so, chin up, <laughs> but with head in the eyes. <laughs> we find Sally Yoshimoto waiting for her husband Togo. That's the Japanese radio. We must be on the beam, all right. We've got to get ready. Where's our machine gunner, Shirley Trubucker? Here I am, Mr. Benny. <laughs> Good. Well, we're on the way, fellas. It won't be long now. Hey, who's that passing us? It's Jimmy Doolittle. Oh, yeah. Hello, Jimmy. Hiya, Jack. Good old Doolittle. Follow him, Rochester. He knows where Tokyo is. <laughs> 
Ought to be around here someplace. Look, Mr. Benny, there's a big island right down below us. And that city there in the middle of it is Tokyo. Tokyo? I get that, Harris. We're going into a dive. I wouldn't drink with them lousy lights for a million dollars. <laughs> Chester, I just had the most wonderful dream. I dreamt I was bombing Tokyo. Tokyo? Did you blow it all up? Not quite. Then I'll stir you up a Welsh rabbit. Let's finish the job. <laughs> That's an idea. What a dream. <laughs> You know, Uncle Sam tells us that one of the most vital industries in America is homemaking. Whereas a homemaker, you help to sustain the health and stamina of the home front. And to help you on that job, our government's national nutrition program tells you how to plan menus wisely. To get each day plenty of the essential foods which promote health and vitality. Now that includes whole grain cereals. Cereals such as delicious toasty brown grape nuts flakes. Where grape nuts flakes are a whole grain cereal, so they supply important whole grain food values, such as iron, niacin, and vitamin B1. Food values which every one of us need every day to help keep ourselves in robust good health. Yes, grape nuts flakes at breakfast will give you a mighty good start on your daily nourishment needs. So for a grand nutritious breakfast dish that's chuck full of delicious flavor, make it malty, rich, sweet as a nut, grape nuts flakes tomorrow morning. That was the last number of the third program in the Grape Nuts Flake series. All kidding aside, ladies and gentlemen, automobile scrap must furnish 5 million of the 30 million tons of steel scrap needed to maintain steel production at its current rate. So sell your old jalopy to an, to an automobile graveyard and help keep the steel mills rolling. I want to thank Colonel Bridget and Colonel Grill for their friendly cooperation here at Williams Field. It was a real pleasure to dedicate this new theater here at the Post. Fine building, no powder room. <laughs> well, it's for the soldier. Good night, Post. The Jack Benny program is written by Bill Maher and Ed Beloy. This program is for the entertainment of Army personnel and does not necessarily constitute an endorsement of its products by the War Department. Have you treated your family to grape nut sweet meal? It's the new hot cereal that's extra nourishing, extra delicious, extra speedy. Grape nut sweet meal is a nourishing whole grain hot cereal. Every tempting steaming bowl full is rich with the goodness of roasted wheat with a texture that's smooth but full bodied. And it cooks in just three minutes. So ask your grocer for the rich hot brown cereal, grape nut sweet meal. This program came to you from Williamsfield in Arizona. This is a broadcasting company.